A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Shiloh, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. In the Tanakh, both in Sefer Melachim and in Sefer Yemiyahu, we read that Gedaliahu ben Achikam was appointed by the Babylonians to be the governor of Judea because there was still a significant Jewish population in the country. When Gedaliah was assassinated by Jews who considered him to be a collaborator, the remaining Jews fled to Egypt and Eretz Yisrael was left for the first time since Joshua without any Jewish population and the exile was complete. For this reason, the Jewish people began fasting on the 3rd of Tishrei, Tzom Gedaliah, to mourn these events. Today, over 6 million Jews, half the Jewish people, reside in Eretz Yisrael. Is there therefore any reason to continue fasting on this day? The very same question, or something quite similar to it, was asked two and a half thousand years ago by a number of prominent members of the Babylonian uh, Jewish exile community with regards to the month of Av, the fifth month of the year, which was from the time of the first destruction, the Hulban Rishon, of the first temple. Uh, from that time, the month of Av, the fifth month of the year, was a month of mourning for the destruction of Jerusalem and the Mikdash, the temple. And therefore we read in uh, Sefer Zechariah, in chapter 7, we read as follows. Weishlah Beth El, Sar Eser, Ureven Melech, Wa'anashau, Lahaloth et Paneadunai. These individuals mentioned by name here sent the following question verbatim. In other words, they sent messengers whose purpose it was to come to Jerusalem to ask the Kohanim, the priests and the Nevi'im, the prophets, the following question in the following words. What we find here in a moment is a direct quote. Lemor el Kohanim. Lemor, to go to the house of Hashem, to the Mikdash, to Yerushalayim, which was at that point just uh, being rebuilt. It was in the middle of being rebuilt at this point. To ask the Nevi'im and the Kohanim the following question. And this is the question verbatim. Ha'evke b'hodesh ha'hamishi. Shall I continue to mourn and uh, cry and wail for Yerushalayim? in the fifth month, Hinazir Ka'ashir Asithi, to continue to uh, conduct myself in the manner of a mourner and therefore refrain from certain things during the fifth month. Ka'ashir Asithi, as I have been doing, in other words, that is to say, we, the Jews of Bavel, have been doing Za Kamashanim these many years. Now, we see the question was particularly, specifically, with reference to the month of Av. But we know, uh, both from standard Jewish practice nowadays and from the fact that uh, in response to this question, the next chapter, Perek Heth, the 8th chapter of Sefer Zechariah, we know that there are four fast days, not just in Av, also in the month of uh, Tishrei, in the month of Teveth, and in the month of Tammuz. There are four such fast days which are all connected to the destruction and uh, of, of Eretz Yisrael and the Mikdash and Yerushalayim and the emptying out of Eretz Yisrael, the fact that Eretz Yisrael became uh, Judenrein without Jewish population. Why, therefore, the question is asked by some of the Mefarshim, some of the commentators, why, therefore, did they not ask about the other fast days? For example, the uh, fast day of Son Gedaliah, which is in the month of, of Tishrei, on the third day of Tishrei. This question is addressed by the Malbim in his Perush, and he writes as follows. As for the reason why they did not ask about other fast days, for example, the fast of the seventh month, Tzom Gedaliah, about this fast, they had no doubt in their mind that they should no longer fast. Because 
because that fast of the seventh month, Som Gedaliah, was due to the fact that at that time Eretz Yisrael was uh, emptied of all its Jewish population. The Jews who had been left there by the Bavlim, the Babylonians, the, the peasants, the people who worked the land, were allowed to remain, some, some number, we don't know the exact number, but it seems uh, many thousands at least, and they had a Jewish governor by the name of Gedaliahu ben Ahikam, and, the, and, and eventually when he was later assassinated, Eretz Yisrael became uh, literally Judenheim, without any Jewish population. This was the, the final seal uh, of finality to the uh, fact of the Jewish exile from Eretz Yisrael. The Malbim continues and he says, وَأَحَارْ شَعَتَا هُشَاوْ يُشُوبْ هَارِسْ أَلْمُخَوْنَوْ And now, in this time when this question is being asked, seeing that there are now Jews returning to Eretz Yisrael, some years before this time, uh, some number of Jews, not the entire Jewish nation by any means, and not even a very significant percentage thereof, but certainly uh, many thousands, probably tens of thousands, from what we know, uh, returned to Eretz Yisrael at this time. And seeing that Eretz Yisrael is no longer empty of Jews, and the Jewish presence in Eretz Yisrael is slowly re-establishing itself, says the Malbim, Kewan Shashavu Kasath Kemispar Shahya Im Gedaliah, seeing that at least the number that existed in the time of Gedaliahu, when, in, as a result of his, his assassination, the remaining Jews, fearing the uh, response and the reaction of the Bavlim, fled to Mitzrayim, leading to the fact that Eretz Yisrael became empty of its Jewish population uh, without any Jews left at all. As a result of this, now that at least an equal number of Jews have returned, says the Malbim, and Makom Lasom Hazeh, there is no longer any room for this fast day. In other words, according to the Malbim, we have to look at the uh, reason for each particular uh, fast of these the these four fast days, we must examine the reason for each particular fast, and if that particular reason or that event has now, Baruch Hashem, been reversed, and the situation is the opposite of what we were mourning about, the reason we, we were bewailing the reality has now uh, ceased to exist, and the reality has improved very significantly, then there is no reason to continue to fast on that day. And therefore, according to the Malbim's uh, commentary here, there is no question that, for example, on this day of uh, the third day of Tishrei, Som Gedaliah, seeing that today the situation is such that uh, Eretz Yisrael is full of Jews, Baruch Hashem, over six million Jews, who constitute uh, probably at least half of the Jewish nation, uh, clearly there is no more uh, reason to fast on this day. This uh, parasha, this uh, sequence of question and answer asked by the people of the Jews of Babel and the question sent to Yerushalayim, to which Zechariah the prophet gives a response uh, later in the next chapter, this is discussed in the Talmud Bavli in the Sechet Rosh Hashanah Daf Yod Heth. And there we find the following formulation. This is a, a rather involved sugya, and a very deep and profound one, and we can't go into all of the ins and outs of it here. What we can say briefly here is as follows, that the uh, conclusion of the Gemara, the maskana is, Rav Papa says, Bazman shiyeh shalom, when the situation is a situation described as shalom, that is to say, when things are as they should be, these days, these fast days, will no longer be fast days. In fact, there will be days when it is forbidden to fast and to mourn, and in fact, there will be days of rejoicing and celebration. The, the other possibility, the second possibility, says Rav Papa, is Yesh Shemad. If these are days, or this is a period of time when there is a reality of Shemad, of of persecution, religious persecution of the Jewish people, so that they are not able to live freely as Jews and to uh, study Torah, for example, and keep the misworth, then these days of fasting are obligatory and one must fast on all these four fast days. So says Rav Papa. But he adds, there is also a third possibility. En Shemad, or En Shalom, if however the situation is neither one extreme nor the other. Rather, there is no persecution, generally speaking, in the, in the world. The Jews are free to uh, go about their business and uh, 
live as Jews. Perhaps there's a certain cases of uh, discrimination against Jews, extra taxation, for example. These, these, these things were certainly prevalent in many parts of the world in different periods of time. But generally, the Jewish people are able to continue their Jewish way of life. That is a situation of En Shemad, where there is no clear and significant form of institutionalized persecution of the Jews and their religion. And there is also no shalom. En Shemad, where En Shalom. There is also uh, not a perfect reality with Eretz Yisrael living, with Am Yisrael rather, living in Eretz Yisrael, with the Mikdash, with a, a state based on Jewish principles uh, and Jewish sovereignty, etc. In that situation, says the Gemara, Rasu Mith'anim, Rasu and Mith'anim. There it depends on the, on the people. If they wish to fast, they may do so, and if they do not wish to fast, they are not required to do so. So says the Talmud in Masechet uh, Rosh Hashanah, the Talmud Bavli Daf Yudhith. This sugya is involved, as I said, and uh, different uh, commentaries have been written on it, but here we will make do with a few quotes from uh, the Geonim and Rabbeinu Hananel and the Rambam. Some of these responses of the Geonim uh, were written as early perhaps as 1300 years ago or 1200 years ago, certainly uh, not uh, later than 1100 years ago. And Rabbeinu Hananel, uh, who I will mention first, lived approximately 1000 years ago. In other words, we're not talking about a period of uh, history in which the Jewish people uh, find everything to their liking. Certainly most of the Jews in the world are not in Eretz Yisrael. The vast majority are living scattered across the globe. And uh, there are probably many things that one could complain about with justification. And yet, we find the following statements of these Chachamim, Rabbeinu Hanel and the Geonim. Rabbeinu Hanel, in his Perush, to the Gemara Masechet Rosh Hashanah, says as follows. In the situation which is Yesh Shalom, which he describes as being a situation, Klomar kol zaman shebet hamikdash kayam, when the Mikdash stands, and this implies also that there are Jews, many Jews probably in Eretz Yisrael, uh, then these days are days of Sason and Simcha, days when it is forbidden to fast, and in fact we are required to rejoice and thank Hashem. Yes, Shemad, if there is a situation of the opposite, as we described, a situation of persecution and war it's against the Jews, that, then the, the, the Hova, the obligation is to fast. En Shemad, wa en Shalom, and here Rabbi Nahanel says explicitly, Kuron Atta Bazman Hazer, as things are today at the present time. Rabbeinu Hananel is writing this in North Africa 1,000 years ago, and we know the situation was far from perfect, both there and in other parts of the world. But it's also true they were uh, much better than things became for many Jews in the world, perhaps most of the Jews in the world, uh, 150, 200, 300, and 400 years later. So in this period of history, Rabbeinu Hananel writes, as things are at the present time, in this situation, Rasul Mith'anim, Rasul and Mith'anim. Then, these, these fast days, he's referring to the three fast days with the exception of Tisha B'Av, because the Talmud makes it clear that Tisha B'Av has a special and more uh, severe status, and therefore we are required to fast on Tisha B'Av as long as the Mikdash is not rebuilt. In that situation, the three fast days are optional. So says Rabbi Hananel. Rabbi Hananel's opinion uh, was not really a hidush, that is to say, he was not the first to express this view. We find uh, several statements by the Geonim who say exactly the same thing. For instance, in the collection of uh, Geonic responsa, Ginzei Chedem, Helek Gimel, the third volume on page 43, we have the following Teshuvah. Bazman Hazeh, Badorot Halalu, in these generations, again, this is probably being written 1200 years ago, 1300 years ago, She'en Shemad Velo Shalom, when the situation is neither black nor white, but somewhere in the middle, Rasu Mith'anim, Lo Rasu En Mith'anim. And therefore, he says, Mi She'eno Rose Lasum, a person, an individual, and it's clear from this formulation, this language, that this is an individual decision that every individual Jew may make for himself, according to this Gaon, Mishe no Rose Lasum and Bechach Klum. 
that, that is an, a matter of no consequence. He's not required to, and it's up to him if he wishes to fast or not. And he is not required to fast on those three fast days. The same statement appears also, a very similar statement appears in Sharet Teshuvah, another collection, a famous collection of Gonic Responsa, in Siman Ein Zain, number 77. Now I read briefly, it says as follows. He writes, with Tishab Ba'av bilavad hu de'ithe hovad. It is only Tishab Ba'av that is a, an, oblig, a, an, an obligatory fast day. Wa otham aherim, the other fast days, rasul mithanim, rasul lo mithanim. That depends on whether people wish to fast or not, in, in the kind of situation in which we find ourselves today. Immediately uh, after this statement, uh, in this Tishuvah, uh, it is mentioned in passing that a later halachic authority uh, mentioned that today, that is to say uh, well after the time of the Gaon who wrote this original responsum, today our practice is to universally fast on these days because he says there are more instances of Shmad in, at, at the present time as we described the historical reality was that uh, as the Middle Ages progressed things became worse for the Jews in, in most parts of the world and, and therefore it is now standard practice. But in the time of the Geonim, when uh, the situation was rather better, then it was not a Chobah to fast on all the other three fast days. And we also find a similar statement in the name of Rav Semah, Rav, Ko, Rav Kohen Sedek, I should say, Rav Kohen Sedek uh, HaGaon, quoted in the Shibuleh HaLeket, Siman Resh Ein Heth, number 278. He writes as follows, he who wishes to fast, referring to the three fast days other than Tisha B'Av, should fast. And he who does not wish to, does not need to fast. Except for Tisha B'Av, he goes on to explain. This is the statement by Rav Kohen Sedek, Gaon, Rav Kohen Sedek, quoted by the Shibulea Leket. But then the Shibulea Leket goes on to say, however, today it is that our practice, general practice, to uh, consider all these fast days to be uh, obligatory. Again, this is an indication of the fact, this is the Shibulea Leket writing uh, much later in the uh, 13th century. Uh, this is an indication of the fact that as uh, the Middle Ages progressed in uh, Europe and in North Africa and other places, the situation uh, of the Jews uh, worsened over time for different reasons. And therefore, that which had once been uh, an optional fast day became, uh, co quite correctly due to the changing circumstances, those days became uh, obligatory fast days. At the present time, a reasonable and unbiased uh, assessment of the reality of the Jewish people today, which on the one hand is far from perfect, true, and on the other hand is certainly no worse, and I think it's fair to say uh, infinitely better on almost every level, certainly in many ways, uh, than during the time of the Goanim, when we see there was a general agreement amongst the Goanim, and even up to the time of Rabbeinu Hananel a thousand years ago, that the three fast days, with the exception of Tisha B'Av, were optional due to the fact that the situation was, shall we say, livable. Today also the situation is certainly livable, and perhaps in many ways much more so. Uh, almost all generations of our forefathers would have uh, been very pleased to live in this period of history. And therefore, the, the halakha, which is not generally understood or recognized or admitted to today, nevertheless, the true uh, halakha regarding the three fast days uh, is that these fast days are optional and it is an individual decision, as we saw clearly in the words of the Gionim. And this is also the view of the Rambam in his Perush on the Mishnah, on that Mishnah in Masechid Rosh Hashanah. Isn't it possible that the circumstances will change for the worse? Of course, it is possible, just as it is possible that the circumstances will change for the better. This is the way of uh, history. This is the reality of a human, the human condition. Things are always fluid and dynamic, and things uh, either go up or down. Jewish history is, uh, is best described uh, like the... Uh, uh, the, o the ways of the ocean. There's always, there's always ups and there's always downs. Therefore, that when the Gemara says that there are three options, there in situation A you do such and such, 
and situation B, you do the opposite. And situation C, which is neither uh, the extreme of A nor the extreme of B, you do something intermediate. That statement, which is an halakhically binding statement, as we saw quoted by the Gionim, Rabban Hananel, etc., uh, this statement is based on the understanding that human affairs and uh, Jewish history are always in a state of fluidity and emotion, and therefore it is understood, it is implicit in these statements, that every so often we have to re-examine and reassess the reality and and act uh, accordingly. One doesn't chop and change from day to day, from year to year, but if uh, certain major changes for the worse, which would uh, indicate the need to change our practice on such days were to occur, then yes, that would be the correct response, and also vice versa. If, uh, if the situation were to change for the better, uh, again, something which is as likely as, as things changing for the worse, then there too we would be required to uh, assess the situation based on the reality before us. It's not possible ever to know uh, what the future holds, and therefore the Talmud made this statement based on that understanding that it will be necessary for Chachamim in different periods of history to assess the reality. And the Jewish people also, even without perhaps always asking the Chachamim directly, intuitively understand and know when uh, it is correct to act in one way and when it is correct to act in the opposite manner. Uh, the Jewish people are wise, they have a, a lot of experience from an historical perspective and they, they know often what to make of the reality but they have to also be empowered, that is to say they have to be educated and, and be told and taught that this is a halachic reality, that they have the ability to assess the reality and to make uh, a decision regarding that reality. Thank you Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.